this season. Mm. The try that I think Callum Watkins scored, where the kick bounced up, impossibly hitting the angle of crossbar and post, bouncing over the the, the witness's player's head just, yeah. evading another witness player just, mm. and then the, the Leeds player coming in and just putting it down. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's basically been witness's year, hasn't it? Yeah, hapless. They're not looking good. Chuckle brother can you, stuff him, can you see him getting off the bottom of the table? No, I can't. I think oh. now they have to start planning for Get the middle eight. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Seeing what players can um, perform to a standard and making sure that they keep the squad, the yeah. squad relatively fit and fresh um, as much as they can. I mean, they lost more players in this, didn't they? Tom Armstrong's gone for a serious injury. Yeah. Lord White came back and barely, barely has come back. Mm. Um, but yeah and then maybe look at the key positions where they think they might be able to add um, an impact player it was interesting to see that Ryan um, Hampshire Mm -hmm. was his his agent obviously has leaked a piece to the trade press this week to get them to say he's looking for a move again because he's not getting played in the halfback positions again Uh, he still did a serviceable job on the wing that we'll get to in a minute but that interested me and pricked my uh, attention, thinking that well, might be... The abs. But the halves aren't really the problem, it's no, the pack. Exactly. No, the halves are all right, they're just not getting a platform like mm. that. Um, surprising. So, what, and, do, uh, what did surprise me, though, was it got to 30-22 at one point, Yeah. which means Leeds really stepped there. off the gas. Yeah. There was some spirit there, you've got to give yeah. them credit for I that. I don't think they've given up on the coach. Hmm. I don't think they've given up on the coaching setup or given up on each other. I just think... There's a combination of players who are not very good, mm. players who are not very fit, and no team continuity. Yeah. And that doesn't all go well when you no. add those things together, does it? No. So, so the stats tell us on this one, Mark. Well, Leeds had a, had a... I've only got sketchy stats written down, but Leeds had a plus 7.3% tackle success, mm-hmm. team tackle success. There was 6-3 to three in clean breaks. Uh, they were probably the two most notable stat wins, but Leeds were equal or better than uh, witness in all of the other key stats too. Um, individually, John Moon, two tries, eight tackle bus, three successful offloads. See, I told the greased up as fuck. No, no one can touch him. Greased up as fuck. Very good. Callum Watkins, two tries, five tackle bus, four successful offloads. Mitch Garber, 156 metres. Danny Maguire, three try assists. Ryan Hall, one try assist, 111 metres. Um, for the losing Vikings, uh, Jack Buchanan was their only like major metre maker, so he had a good game here, 155, after what I said, Ooh. 155 metres. Well, that was the one of three. Uh, Pat Arvan, 108 metres. Tom Gilmore grabbed two tries, and Corey Thompson, who played at fullback in this one, with a try and six tackle busts. Yeah, okay, there you go. So, down at the Lee Sports Village, then Hull FC were finally able to plug the leaky dam uh, that is their defence and come away with a 24 points to 10 victory over the newly promoted Lee team in front of 6,296. So, a creditable attendance down at LSV as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sean said, Lee clueless in attack, Hull not much better, but took their chances. Andrew Scrimshaw got in touch and said, back on the horse after some really disappointed performances of late a much better defensive showing and looking more like our old selves pleasing we are fifth in the table and not got in our stride yet as a team and that should be a warning to the rest of Super League I think we've learnt from last year and are saving ourselves for the business end of the year come on you Hull that's what's Um don't look at me like I was ever going to forget to say it no I wasn't I was wondering if I was going to say it or you were going to say it yeah, uh, you can say it if you like. No, well, it is good to Grimshaw. Although, are they being like wishful thinking, thinking that like they've not hit their straps yet? Because I think they had a couple, yeah, a couple of weeks where they did hit the straps. A couple and... of games where I think that was as best as it was going to get right. this year, per- personally. But maybe, we'll I, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Um, I've seen two. I've seen some of their poorer performances, haven't I? So, mm. um, yeah. Uh, Rich Langley, our whole back on the horse is the injury crisis evening, easing. Great, <laughs> great opening half, but fell off again in the second. Young Jez Litton started to ease into first team role, which is a positive. Big game coming up this week. Here's hoping we have some lads back. Hashtag wireless based review. There you go. Uh, Joshua Grandad, uh, John Scotter 15. So, a definite improvement, but still far too many brain farts forcing non existent passes. First play errors. Welcome back to Carlos Tumavavi, a class act causing Lee problems all game. Big games from the youngsters Brad Fash and Jez Litton too. 
Scoots28 Mac said, Still not a full 80 performance, but better than the last two matches. Carlos looked good. Youngsters performed well. Fesh particularly didn't look out of place. Litton, whilst not Houghton, showed promise. There you go. AK Steel 69 said, Against a poor looking Lee side, Hull FC's defensive resolve returned, keeping the opposition scoreless until the last 20 minutes. This despite Hull's best efforts to get Lee over the line by once again gifting opposition loads of possession. Watts was England class, Fenua made huge hard metres, and we saw a glimpse of a star in the making in young hooker Jez Litton, a step back in the right direction. Yeah, it all sounds pretty positive for for Hull, but pretty abject for Lee. And yeah. They did shift things up a lot in their back line. Mm. Uh, certainly the three quarters were, other than Ben Crooks, all change yeah. sort of thing. Um, drink water was back. Good. Well, good but him. obviously it didn't have much impact yet. Mm-hmm. because Probably because the forwards were a little depleted. Right. Hock's been out, hasn't he, over Easter? And he's has. been making a really good impact mm. for them. And um, did Axon play in this one? I'm not sure off the top of my head that he did. And he is he injured? Yeah, he's suspended. Well, I think he's injured. Isn't but he? he he was doing it. He was. Those There's two, a very good chance he's suspended. Those two are big impact. Play, have been big impact players for them when they've been able to keep their heads this year. Yeah, and um, I think without them, the front row, while still has good workers, mm. I think it lacks a sort of. Ferocity. Yes. Yeah, without those, that the, certainly that, that's the bite, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, which they've been relying on early in games. Now, when they've not made their quick starts, as they obviously didn't in this one, 18 nil down at, at half time, they've just. They've never been able to recapture. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a second half spurt from them, does there? No. It always seems to kind of be if we, if we go, if we fly out of the traps, we put teams on the back foot and then try and hold on from there. There was a touch of one against. Witness wasn't the when the game was well and truly mm. out of out of reach, yeah. but um, I, th- I think it, this one to me smelt as much of Lee aren't very good at the moment and are, are patched than, up mm. and are the oldest squad in Super League and Easter weekend was always going to be a tough thing for the oldest and least Super League experience yeah. in terms of the, what backups they can bring in um, side in Super League so. Perhaps that's the reason that this is the way the result went, rather yeah. than necessarily an improvement, a massive improvement in holes. All Hull probably needed was a few standout performers, and they certainly got that in Carlos Tumavave. Have you mm. seen he was managing to slice through the defence completely? He's uh, a tremendous uh, one in the uh, ball, isn't he? At will and, and doing what he does best. I was surprised that they went with him on the left and Murphy on the right, given that Tumavave had started the season on the right centre and. Did I say Murphy? I meant Connor. Mm. Connor has traditionally been a left centre when we've seen him play in the centres of the Giants, but. It, it worked pretty well. Switch it well, didn't it? Mm. Okay, so what did the stats tell us on this one? They said that Lee actually made more clean breaks in this game, nine to five, <sighs> but scored two tries less than their visitors. Added to that, a little less ground, a little worse average gain, and more significant probably was a one point eight percent worse team tackle success. Hull, Hull FC actually tackled as a team better than ninety percent for the first time in a long time. Woo! and hung on despite giving up a 12-8 penalty count and a shocking 17-15 error count oh, errors again this weekend right individually who stood out for us Carlos Tumavave two tries five tackle bus 147 metres Liam Watts was very good a try a try assist five tackle bus 136 metres Mahi Fanua made a big impact 11 tackle bus 260 metres five successful offloads Mark Snide with three try assists so another um you know, creative performance from a Brit, from an English half, mm. and then Danny Washbrook one try assist, forty tackles. Okay, so for the Centurions who got onto the stats roundup, well, Rocky Hampshire on the wing grabbed himself a try, one hundred and twenty two meters and four clean breaks. Lachlan Burr came off the bench for a try assist, one hundred and seven meters. Dame Weston had his best Super League game so far, one hundred and thirty eight meters. David Thompson came in for what I think is his first game for the Lee Centurions yeah. first team 144 metres two clean breaks for the former Salford Warrington winger Warrington Warrington I think yeah and um, Ben Crooks a try assist five tackle bus 131 metres almost as reliable as Mark Percival as a centre almost. who plays every week in the stats round there you go yes he's having a good season Ben Crooks ok over to the totally wicked stadium then uh, where Castleford had the chance to uh, further improve their position at the top of the league but the Saints revival 
you want to call it that, continue with a 20 point to, a 26 points to 22 victory over the league leaders. Uh, Castleford attempted the comeback, but it wasn't quite on. In front of 12,499. Put an asterisk next to that. Asterisk. I haven't seen any Finn official, but <sighs> one of the <coughs> guys yeah. at the game uh, picked that, that attendance up. Yes. Um, right. Tyler Cass fan. Saints were the better team and deserved the win. They were resolute and stubborn in defence and sharper in attack. Cass didn't help themselves with untidy plays and too many errors. Our miserable record away at Saints continues. And Fat Boy Rob said, arm wrestle of a match which Saints deservedly won because they took their chances and shut down Cass like Sulphur did a few weeks back. The game wasn't helped by the ref not keeping the 10 and allowing both sides to slow the game down at the play of the ball. He was crap for both sides, so no complaints. Really, well done, Saints. Level-headed stuff from Fat Boy Rob. Wardy at Ben Ward 001 said, Ref Campbell had an absolute nightmare game, lost the game for Cass. Uh, Adam Conley at Adam Conley 87. Cass not at their best, but Campbell was very biased towards the home side. And then Tyler Saints fan. Uh, <laughs> only a very recent convert to the Saints, but from this showing, I think we'll be well on the way back to the top very soon. Regan Grace looks to be a top player in the making, and our coach Jamal is a dark horse for coach of the year. Hashtag I win the Saints. Can I just say that we've had some parody people get in touch before and we have people who parody uh, Kieran Cunningham's mum, I remember getting in touch, and we've had referees and things like that. It's a mark of the boy that Tyler Cass fans' contributions and thoughts on rugby league are so well-rounded and so generally quite astute that listeners to the Super League pod are now parodying a listener by getting in touch. So Unless he's parodied himself here, which is... Oh, if he's doing that, he's a... He's a Dick for making me talk nicely about him, and then it turns out it's I him. Thi- I think if anything, I don't think he has part of it. It's even more postmodernist brilliance. I, 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 I suspect that this is uh, this is one Mr. Bearded Langley, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Bit of a fight back from Cast. That marvelous Sinella Fayo try. Not enough. Um. Not enough. Was it Sinella Fayo? The one where he he, he barged through about four of them. It's not springing to mind no, who exactly no. it was, but do we say it, whether Senny Lefeo or Moore scored a try? Well, Moore didn't score a try, so it must, it must be Senny Lefeo. There you go. Ben Roberts scored two tries where he carried three people through the line. Ben Roberts had a good game. So it right. might have been Ben Roberts. It, both his tries were, you know, quite um, tough yeah. to score efforts that he, he made the best of a difficult situation on. To be fair, I saw the tries for this one on my phone, so I'm kind of basing it on. Oh, you look Polynesian. I think he's similar. Yeah, yeah. I think he's similar. Fair. Yeah. I, well, I was pretty similar, to be honest. I didn't. I didn't catch much of this one, but mm. um, I think it was uh, from from what I've, I've read and seen. I think Saints had a had a cast like period in the middle of the first half. Yeah. Um, largely inspired by Mark Percival, mm-hmm. which is much of their season this year, and that really helped draw them on. I think that. We talk about golden edges and, you know, Wiggins was back in force on Good Friday with all the tries it scored, but Saints' left edge is consistently getting in the in the in the stats roundup and obviously with young Regan Grace they're uh, they're adding an extra touch of flash and class mm-hmm. to what already was a very good Farge Taylor Percival edge. And hopefully, with the uh, with the new style of coaching that they might be receiving, that'll be something that they exploit more often. Definitely, they're putting a confidence in you. Sean Matty Fleming got his go uh, in this one in place of Ryan Morgan, who picked up an injury at some point during the Wigan game. I can't remember when he went off, but he, he did. Um, sensible, because, you know, Cunningham would have probably put McCarthy Scarsbrook or Peru in there who <laughs> yes, he'd crack the Ruder, wouldn't he? <laughs> who maybe don't have the zest for it that these young kids have got well look these are kids that are brought up through the academies and these are kids that play for the shirt and play for their own town club yeah. and they probably do have that oh talking of joy of pulling talking on of Saints shirt. Academy and Wigan Academy Wigan Academy beat Saints on Sunday I can't remember it was a long weekend when it's Sunday right. afternoon I think well, and um, that's the first time in a long time the under 19s yeah yeah because yeah, they won the title last year didn't they the, mm. the Saints under 19s but no but there was uh, one red card and three yellow cards. There's the passion in the game. No, it, it was for a string of pretty bad. One of them was a. One of them I thought was a bit soft. Right. Um, oh, have you seen the game? In terms of a red ta- a red card, the red card was a little bit 
wasn't sure. I thought we want more a yellow card. Right. Uh, but there's one of the yellow cards that I thought could have been a red card. Okay. Well, let's get back to talking about St. Helens and Castleford rather than the Wigan under 19s team. Well, we, will be, we will be accused. I'm the Saints under 19s team. Fair enough. I'll give you that. You gave me the segue. I just ran with it. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> I actually don't think that whilst Cass did get it 